Did you know that a brand new house in Tulsa, Oklahoma will sell for $165,000 and rent for $1,400 a month? That's crazy to me. But the question is, is owning rental properties a good way to retire early? Is it truly passive income or are you just plunging toilets and putting out fires? If you're not sure if you want to manage your own property or hire someone else to do it, or even rent, own rental properties at all, this video will help you with your decision. Welcome to Seeking Unemployment, a show dedicated to the most efficient way to financial freedom. So if you're just, if you don't have anything and you're wanting to get into the, the rental market, yeah. so we can help them with that too. So people ask us all the time, where should I buy a rental property? And I always ask them, depends on what you want. So, I mean, you've got both ends of the spectrum from new construction to where you can have zero maintenance from day one to rehabbed homes that are maybe in section eight rentals to kind of everywhere in between. So I try to ask them, you know, what, what are you looking for? Are you looking for appreciation? Are you looking for cash flow? Um, if they say, well, I'm, I'm looking to quit my job next year. I'm like, well, then <laughs> this, well, rentals are not get rich quick deals. I mean, if you, if you can flip some homes and wholesale some homes and get some cash coming in, that's where you're gonna generate big cash, but even those are harder to find. I mean, rentals are long-term, steady. I mean, I bought my first rental, um, 1999. And I was talking to my business partner about it last week. We had one guy that was in there for seven and a half years, and he paid us, just in that seven and a half years, $20,000 more than we paid for the house. So, I mean, that's a long-term hold where you're just letting somebody else pay it, pay it off, and you don't worry about it. Yeah. I mean, I've owned homes for 20 years, and I hardly ever take money out of what I call my rental account. I just leave it sitting there, and that's, you know, if my air conditioner goes out, I've got it. It's time to pay taxes, I got it. Um, because in our market, I mean, you're, if you're clearing, you know, 150 to 300 dollars a month on a rental, that's pretty good. But I mean, I'm not buying that because I need that money today to live off of. I'm yeah. buying that because I want it in 15 years when it's mostly paid off and I've really got a good income coming out off it. And that's what I do. That's what I've got on some of my homes that we bought, you know, back in the early 2000s. Yeah, it's probably they're probably really really nice right now. It's great. I mean, they're homes that I mean just. Back then, we paid fifty-five thousand dollars for, and now they're worth a hundred and twenty, and we owe twenty thousand dollars on them, and they're bringing in a thousand dollars a month. And I haven't done anything other than just maintain them over those years. That's it. We're talking about uh, how a rental isn't a get-rich-quick scheme, right, or a method, whatever you want to put it. Uh, it is a long-term strategy. Why is that? It, to my understanding, it's because you're only really going to cash flow 100, 200 bucks or so off of something um, fairly quickly. Right. And I don't know about you, but I can't live off $200 a month. Right. I mean, the, the idea is you let somebody else pay off your mortgage. So you could go and plop $100,000 down on one house and have $1,000 a month coming in, or you can go plop down Twenty thousand dollars on five houses, and have you know two hundred dollars a house coming in. You still got your thousand dollars coming in, but you now have five assets, and you're just letting somebody pay it down. But you've got to be diligent and be in it for the long haul. I get it all the time. People are in it for a year and a half, and they're like, "Oh, we got to get out. We're just we're not making any money." I'm like, "Well, you're not supposed to really make any money off of it right now." I mean, that's that's the hard thing to get over uh, because you see all these people talking about, well, I'm now making $10,000 a month now. And they're like, are you really? Or are you like, you're grossing $10,000 a month and you're netting $1,000 a month? Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. So what would you prefer? One house for 100 grand or five for 20 grand each? Five all day long. Right, more leverage. Right. Yeah, so you make more money. We make more money when you get leverage. You just do. Yeah. I mean, people do. It doesn't make sense. Like, how do I make more money if I get a loan? Well, you can buy more things because you don't spend all your cash on one thing. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not a big, you know, hit Dave Ramsey type of loan. Never loan money, never borrow money on anything. Well, I don't borrow a bunch of money except on homes. That's, that's it. Um, so it makes sense to me to put the 20% down, get a nice 4.5% interest rate, and ride it out for 15 years. Um, you know, things, obviously things happen during that time, but you can always 
sell them if you have to. Uh, that's the one thing I try to remind my clients on real estate. It is liquid, but it's not instantly liquid. So you can't just decide I need fifty thousand dollars tomorrow and get your fifty thousand dollars tomorrow out of a house unless you're really willing to, you know, take a haircut on it and sell it to somebody super cheap. Yeah. What's the median home price in Tulsa right now? Uh, median home price for all sales right now is about one seventy two. Oh wow. Jeez. It's getting I gotta buy me some houses around here. And see you think that you think that's cheap. Well, I you have I, to understand. I grew up in Southern California, right. just just south yeah. of LA. I and before and now, right now I live in Salt Lake City, um, which felt extremely cheap to me at the time when I first bought bought my first house. And before that I lived in Hawaii. Um, oh so, <laughs> you know, I, my first house was, um, that I was renting was about 300 square feet covered in uh, cockroaches and spiders. Paint's not there. Um, you know, it's a dump. It's wow. a total dump. No landscaping at all. I had to evict all the tenants, tenants, which was, uh, 18 chickens that roosted in the breadfruit tree in the backyard. <laughs> I had to go shoot all the roosters cause I couldn't sleep at night. And, um, yeah, that was twelve hundred a month, you know. Wow. Um, and yeah, three hundred square feet. It's like it, uh, didn't have a stove, didn't have a garbage disposal, none of that stuff. So. And that's the difference that I get. I mean, here in Oklahoma, if I if you call me from Tulsa and say you want a rental, and I say, yeah, I've got a hundred and five thousand dollar house that'll rent for nine fifty right now. Like I've got an owner here selling it, and you're from Tulsa, they're like. Can you find me something for seventy that rents for nine fifty? And I tell them rewind, right to two thousand five, and we can find that. You can't find that anymore. But I get somebody from California that calls me, and they're like, "Hold on, stop the press. You can buy a house for one hundred and five thousand dollars. What's it look like? Right? Well, it's an actual brick three bedroom two bath home, or a three bedroom one bath home in a great part of town, and they just." They can't get over that. And then I say, well, we also have a partnership with a local builder. I can buy you a brand new house for $165,000, $170,000 that'll rent for $1,400. you kidding me? No. That's a great deal. Right. And, but it's perspective. From California, that's a great deal. I tell somebody locally, one seventy, you're going to get $1,400. And like, ah, I'm not doing that. Wow. So, yeah, so um, perspective-wise, I mean, you could, there is no way you would find a deal like that in Utah right now. Right. No, yeah. not a chance. So, yeah, that's why a lot of people, that's why there's a, a lot of people saying that you cannot find a, a good deal in California right now because the numbers don't, are well, quite like that. Well, property managers I talked to out there are like, yeah, our clients are buying $950,000 three bedroom, two bath houses that rent for $3,500. Yeah. I'm like, if you give me $950,000, I mean, without trying, I could get you 6500 a little bit of trying, we could probably get seventy five hundred, and I mean that's I mean that's easy pickings. So when you, when someone man, let's say an investor comes to you and they become or you, they become a client of yours mm-hmm. and you're working with them, things are going good. How much? I mean every every investor I think really wants to just buy a property, never touch it again, and just collect checks. Right. It seems like. You know, maybe there's some people out there that don't want to do that, but I, it seems like the majority that's where they fall into, and for good reason. Is it does it truly become a hands off experience, or how much involvement does there need to be still from an investor? So I think that depends on the investor, and a lot of times, especially in the first couple of months, they really want to be involved because they don't know exactly, and we encourage our staff to help them with that. So. Um, when the statement goes out, I would rather the property manager call them immediately, say, hey, we just sent out your first statement. Do you have time to go over it with me? Because when you're looking at it the first time, I mean, it may be laid out different. Um, so you want them to be able in 90 days to look over that statement without you. So when they get it, they go, looks right, and they're done. Then they're only calling you if like, oh, whoa, what's that? Why, is, I don't understand this. Yeah, what's this they, maintenance cost or whatever? Right. So, but when it comes to maintenance, uh, that's another thing. I, I mean, we tell all of our people it's it's three hundred, five hundred, three hundred dollars or less on anything but plumbing, and uh, electric or HVAC, because typically we don't have electrical emergencies. That's more like maybe on a redo or something. Because 
most of our electric problems are, hey, the ceiling fan's wobbling or something, and our maintenance guys can go out and take care of a ceiling fan or garbage disposal, things like that. But if we have, have to actually, you know, if it's a sewer line or something, and we're sending a plumber, I mean, they're not, I mean, they're going to walk on the property and it's 120 bucks. Yeah. Whether, before they've done anything. Yeah. Same thing with the HVAC people. So, Would, is it reasonable to say that it's essentially a hands off experience other than getting a phone call saying, hey, do you approve yes. this or disapprove this? It should be. If you're hiring a professional property manager and you've set out the parameters of this is when I want you to contact me, it should be pretty hands off. So, you review your statement. Your check is automatically deposited. Uh, everything's communicated by email and text. Um, I will say it is hard on a property manager if you get that owner that's just pinging you all the time. What's, yeah. what's this? What's this? What's this? Because we do want to communicate, but sometimes there's over communication. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I understand. Hours in a day. And, and I understand. So, from a property manager's perspective, I mean, Kim may have 150 homes in her portfolio that she's managing. So she's attending to all those. And then if Derek is hitting her every five minutes, she's like, I've got other properties I got to deal with. I mean, I've explained it. So, I mean, but we do want them to, to feel like they can call us anytime, email us anytime. So, but from an owner perspective, if they want it to be hands off, it definitely can be. How do viewers get in touch with you? Let's say there's an investor they want you yeah. to manage their property. Maybe it's somebody that's an investor that's trying to get some advice. I mean, are you open to absolutely? That, that's so, a great value add right there. To be yeah, we're. I mean, we're happy to talk to anybody. Whether you, if you own houses, if you're thinking about owning houses, um, you know, if you're in our markets in Tulsa or Oklahoma City, and of course that includes all the suburbs around those uh, two metropolitan areas in Oklahoma, we're happy to talk to you about what you can do, especially if you're an out-of-state investor, we love to talk to you. Because for the most part, I know if I help you into property, you're gonna continue to use my service because it's not like you're just gonna say, oh, well, I'm right around the corner, I'll do it myself. So we want to help out-of-state investors invest in Oklahoma. So if there are people out there that want those new construction houses that are 170,000 that are rent for 1,400, 1,450, I mean, we got a partnership with a local builder and we'll line you up. If you want older homes, I mean, I've got a package right now for another investor that we're trying to move. You know, they're $90,000 houses that rent for $850, $900 a month. Um, feel free, www.rentersplace.com or email me, Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y, no I, no E. It's the boy spelling, Tracy at rentersplace.com. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to reach out to Tracy, his links will be in the description below. Uh, he's a great person to get in contact with if you're looking to buy, sell, invest from out of state um, or get a property manager solution from in the Tulsa or Oklahoma City um, regions. And click on the link down there to subscribe uh, for more investing content. And um, this video up here to watch T Tracy teach us about what property managers actually do. If you're interested in investing passively through multifamily apartments, let's chat and get that ball rolling. And I'll, as always, I'll leave that uh, link in the description below. Thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.